Hey guys, and welcome to the new way to introduce neural networks and deep learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to talk about the TensorFlow documentation. So we're going to go into TensorFlow documentation and I'm going to show you like how we can navigate around uh, in it. And I'm going to show you like how we can find the different kind of like uh, documentation for the, in, for the building classes that we have. And also like how we can read up the different kind of descriptions of the classes and modules that is built into TensorFlow. And also how we can find different kind of guides in there and how we can learn more about TensorFlow and how we can work with TensorFlow. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description where we talk about different kind of stuff like within neural networks and, and deep learning and also computer vision. And also if you're currently working on a project and you have some problems, I can go ask them in there and maybe I can answer or some of the other guys, but just come chat with us guys. So we're now jumped into TensorFlow documentation here or like the TensorFlow website here and I'm going to show you like how we can actually like navigate around here in TensorFlow and also how we can see how the API works and how we can learn different kind of stuff um, within TensorFlow and how we can actually like use the different kind of modules and guides and, and the different kind of classes that is already built in. So first of all here we can go up here and we can see the different kind of like menus that we can choose from. So we can either go into the install here so we can see then like how we can actually like install in TensorFlow here on a computer. In case that we're using Google Colab as we've been in this uh, throughout this tutorial here, we can actually like all of this, these different kind of things here is already installed in, in Google Colab and we, we can just import them and use them as we want to. But if you want to use them in your own computer or on your own machine, then you can go just go into the install tab here and see how we can actually like install it both with pip here or like with docker and also if you want to build uh, the tensorflow library or module here uh, from source you can also actually like do it here and you'll get a guide with it and also if you want gpu support uh, when you're downloading or installing tensorflow but in most cases you will just use the pip installation here so you can just go in uh, to the command or, or like to the terminal and you can just pip install tensorflow and you will get a guide here on how to actually do it and also if you want to set up uh, a virtual environment. So the thing, second thing we're going to talk about here is the actual like learn tab up here. So if you have this learn tab here, you'll get this uh, drop down menu here so we can see different kind of stuff that you can learn within TensorFlow. So if you're totally new to TensorFlow, you can get like a short introduction up here uh, where it talks about like what is TensorFlow and how we can use it and stuff like that. And then we can also learn something about like the TensorFlow core ohm source machine learning library here. And also if you're going to use it for like JavaScript or like some mobile or internet of things, applications and stuff like that on embedded devices, how can actually like use something called TensorFlow Lite, uh, which is a Lite version of TensorFlow. And also if you're going to use it for production, then you can also learn something about it uh, in this tab here, which is TensorFlow extended for end-to-end -end, uh, mach uh, machine learning uh, components. But in this case here, we're just going to go up here first to the introduction here. So we can see you can get in this introduction here where you can choose these different kind of tabs here with the shift window over in the learn tab. And then you can go down here and see the TensorFlow ecosystem. So we can see here that we need to load and pre-process the data and how we can use it both in the Python de um, the development environment here with both the GPU, CPU and the TPU and how we can use it in iOS on, for example, um, like uh, its devices with Raspberry Pi, Android, iOS and stuff like that. So we can use like, for example, TensorFlow here to actually like deploy our models. We can really build our models or like train our models and stuff like that on the edge devices, but we can like do it in the Python development environment here, where we can both like load and pre-process pre data, we can build, train and reuse our models, and we can also like deploy our models using Python. So we can see like how we can actually like use uh, the different kind of like layers here in the ecosystem of, of, of TensorFlow. So if you're going to use it in a mobile or like an edge device on a Raspberry Pi, for example, uh, you will probably like use a personal computer or Google Colab to load and pre-process the data and then build and train and you, uh, uh, build, build and train your model. And then you can actually like just export that model and deploy it uh, on an edge device with TensorFlow Lite a library here or the module TensorFlow Lite, which is just like a live version of the actual like TensorFlow you can also use this enter in production here where you have some other different kind of um, opportunities here and also the different kind of tools we have, uh, but we won't, won't really go more into details with it. Like you can go in, in here and, and read more about it if you want to, but we can also go into the TensorFlow tab here where you can see like we can get some different kind of tutorials and we can also see some guides if you want to get some guides on like how the different kinds of concept works and also the components of TensorFlow. And the first of your tab here, you can actually like see some tutorials here where you can see that we have some tutorials both for beginners and for experts. So how we can 
uh, had like a quick start here for beginners so with the hello notebook here of the carrot sequential api and also how we can use the carrot basics and how we can load in data and stuff like that here for beginners so i will have videos about uh, these tutorials here in this uh, in this tutorial here so make sure to check that those videos out uh, if you're interested in knowing like how we can actually, like create neural network from scratch and i'm also going over the different kind of concepts uh, behind creating neural networks and, and what is going on when we're actually like creating and also training neural networks and then i'm going to create a neural network from scratch train it on data sets and then do predictions on data that the neural network hasn't trained on before and then we're going to talk about the training process epr per epr and see like uh, how the how the training process goes and how we can actually like optimize it and tune it a bit and then also here we have some uh, some tutorials here for experts so if we want to have like an advanced quick start or like how we can actually like have customization so this notebook uh, collection shows how to build custom layers and training loops in tensorflow and we can also use distributed training here so how we can actually like uh, distribute our model training uh, over like multiple gpus or like multiple machines or tpus in case we're using uh, google colab and we also have some customization here where we can actually like create our own training loop if we want to do some specific things inside of our training loop instead of just calling the fit function from the Keras uh, API here, which we can, which we'll do up here in this Keras basic year or beginning quick start here, which has this Keras sequential API function and model fit here, which just does all the training, but we can also do some customization if we want to do some specific things uh, in our, uh, in our neural network. We also have some different kind of like library extensions uh, and stuff like that. You can go read uh, more about uh, if you're interested in that. And then we can also, we also have here in the TensorFlow documentation here, we also have the API here, uh, where we can just go here and see that, say that we want to use this TensorFlow API here, uh, version 2.41, which is the current version. And then first of all, here we can see like how we can, first of all, pip install TensorFlow uh, module here. And then we also see what different kind of modules do we actually like have built into TensorFlow here that we can read more about if we're going to use it in our application uh, and stuff like that. And over here to the right, we actually like get a short table of content, contents here so we can see what is actually like in this overview tab here. So all the tabs here are actually like uh, set up in this way here so we can see like what this tab here contains and what the different kind of modules here contains. So we can see that we're first of all here, we have TensorFlow, we have different kind of modules, we have different kind of classes, functions, and also other members. And then we can see the, all the different kind of like sub modules here that we have inside of the modules. Uh, so these are not really like really important and, and, uh, and interesting right now, but we can see that we have some different kind of things here that we can see. And um, we can also have some different kind of classes if we're going to like have a base neural network module class, which is module class here that we can just go in import uh, as we're already done in some of the previous tutorials in this uh, tutorial here or videos in this tutorial here. Uh, and we also have some other different kind of classes and we can use some uh, some functions as well. So we just want to see like how one of those tabs here is actually like organized and how we can see descriptions of the different kind of things that is, that is actually like implemented and also see what different kind of parameters that we can specify uh, within these modules here. Then we're going to go down here and actually like see this tf.caris here if we're going to use uh, at the caris module that we've been using throughout this tutorial here with uh, deep learning and neural networks. So if we tip, uh, hit this tab here, we can actually see we get uh, this drop down menu here where we get the overview here, we get input, model, and sequential. And then inside of this class here, we actually like have uh, other different kind of modules or classes um, implemented as well. So in one of the, in one of the previous uh, videos here as well, we also were going to use some of the pre-trained pre models that we already have. So we can actually like see that if we're, going, if we're going to the applications tab here, we can see that we actually like get some of the other different kind of pre-built models that we already have uh, here uh, in the applications tab here in Keras. And then if we just go into one of the uh, one of the neural networks here in the, for example, the mobile net that we already did a video, uh, video about, then we can go in here and see and a short description of what is actually like going on in this mobile net uh, class here or like a module here inside of TF Keras applications mobile net here. And we also have a lot of mo uh, other different kind of modules here. So we can use some different kind of like uh, linear algebra, uh, linear algebra methods and stuff like that for this TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow library here as well. So it's not only for our neural networks, it's also just for uh, matrix, uh, matrix operations and stuff like that in, in general. And also if you do want to use some, some bitwise operations and uh, distributions, D types, est estimators, experimental and stuff like that so there's a lot of different kind of modules built into the tensorflow library here and if you're interested in that uh, for your own application and stuff like that you can just go in here and all the different kind of modules here is organized in the same way
story as I'm going to show you now. So we're just going down here to the carriers that we've already been working on and we're going to the active applications here. Then we get another drop down menu here and we can see the, all the different kind of neural networks that is already uh, uh, built into carriers uh, or like TensorFlow with carriers here. And then we can go on here and see we get a new table of contents here so we can see what this uh, tab here actually contains. So first of all, we can see here that it's used in, in notebooks. So we'll get, get like how we can actually like use, use it in notebooks. And we also get um, we arguments so we can see like what different kind of arguments that this uh, mobile net function or module here take. And we can also see what it returns and also the raises here um, as well for this function. So first of all, here we get a short uh, description of what it is and we can actually like see here the source code of the implementation of, of, of all the modules here that we have in TensorFlow. Um, we can actually like see all the, the all this source code here as well. So if we review here, view the source here on GitHub, then we'll just get like this uh, mobile net here. So we have we're inside TensorFlow here, and we're inside Python carriers, applications, and mobile net. And then we can see the whole implementation here of this class here, and we can see all the different kind of parameters that we can specify um, and stuff like that. So we can actually like go into the source code from the TensorFlow, um, TensorFlow uh, API documentation here and see the actual source code, how it's implemented uh, and stuff like that to get a better understanding of, of what is going on when we call these different kind of functions. And we can also see the, the TensorFlow 1 version of it, but in this case here we're running TensorFlow 2. And then we just get a, a, a short description of what this function actually does. So in this case here, it just instantiates the mobile net architecture here. And we can see here, uh, how the function actually like works here. So we can see the number, uh, like different kind of arguments that we have here. So this is just a way that this function here is organized and also the default parameters. Then we can see here that we get this tab here with the used in notebook. So if this function here is actually like used in some of the tutorials or guides that, that they're providing, then we can actually like just hit this tab here where uh, where we can actually like see how it's used. So we have this reference here, the mobile net efficient convolutional neural network for mobile uh, vision applications. And then we can just click these tabs here and see an actual example of how this mobile net function here is actually like used in an application or in a project. And then we also get some references down here and we can see that we also get a note here, which is really important when we're using these uh, pre-built modules here. So we get a note here that each carrier application expects a, a specific kind of input pre-processing for a mobile net call tf.carriage applications mobile net pre-processing input, which is another function on your input before passing them to the model. So to actually like pre-process um, pre the input in a proper way for the mobile net architecture in this example here. And then we get a short description of the different kind of arguments that we actually like have to this function or method here. So we have this input shape here. We get a description of what it is, what the different kind of default default parameters are, and if we change some of the parameters, uh, what, what what will it do? And we also and then then we just get a short description for all the different kind of arguments um, that we can specify. So for example, dropout here, we can see that uh, this dropout rate here just specified that this is a dropout rate and the default to uh, 0 0.001, and then we can just specify to something else. Uh, but we just get the default parameters, and we get we get a short description of. Uh, what it is and then we go down here we can see that what what this function or method here actually like returns when we call it so we just returns a carriage.model instance so in the in, in the previous uh, video where we talked about this mobile net here and actually like did predictions and load in the mobile net uh, architecture neural network here then we can see that it, it actually just returns a model instance so we can just call model equal uh, to this function here or like this method here specify the different kind of parameters and then all the different kind of things will be stored in that model uh, variable that we can then later on use uh, to do actual predictions. And we can also see some of the races here that is implemented so we can get some value errors in case of invalid arguments for the weights or invalid input shape. So if we're not having a valid uh, input shape for the images that we're going to pass for our neural network, then we'll get a value error. And we can also see here that if our classifier activation is not softmax or none, when using a pre-trained top layer, then we also get a value error. So we can see some of the races here or like some of the uh, some of the most common errors that it, that is uh, occurring or like races when we're actually like calling this function here as well. So this is the way that the, all of the different kind of like implementation of the modules and also the, all the different kind of um, methods inside the modules is actually like implemented and documented here in the TensorFlow uh, documentation. So first of all, you get a short description of what this module and the function or method does, and then you will see an example of how to use it. You can see like if it's used in other applications or in some other notebooks that you can use as well. You will get some notes here if, if, that, if something is necessary for this function before calling it and stuff like that. 
you get the arguments, so the arguments to the functions that you need to call. You will need to get a short description and you get the default parameter that that is called with. And you will also see the return type or like the return, uh, what, what return type the actual function uh, has. And also some of the races or like some of the most common errors uh, and stuff like that. And we'll also do it for the other different kind of layers or like neural networks here. So if you go into this ResNet Hunter and one here, it will have the exact same structure here. Um, as the other one and all the different kind of modules and also if we're going to like for example the bitwise here or like the estimator and stuff like that it will have the same it all like all the documentation here will be structured in the same way so when you when you know the structure here and you know like how to go through it you can just use the tensorflow documentation as you want to uh, in your application so it's really important to know how to read documentation and stuff like that because you don't really want to know everything about like everything and all the different kind of modules that you're using when you're programming in, in Python and stuff like that. You just want to know like, uh, you just want to know like how we can actually like uh, go around in the documentation, how to use the documentation and also like where to find those different kind of things and how to specify them. So that's really important when you're building like for example, neural networks and stuff like that. You just need to know like how to look it up in documentation and how to read it. And then you need to know like uh, what happens when I, when I, cha I change this parameter and stuff like that. And you can read that up in here in the documentation and you can get this short description of it. And often you will also get a note if something really important um, is necessary for your application or like your function to run. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video here. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. I'm currently just doing a computer vision tutorial where we're talking about some different kind of like image processing techniques and stuff like that. And then later on we're going to combine it with uh, deep learning so where you can see like how convolutional neural networks and computer vision uh, work together. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else on the scene in the next video guys. Bye for now.